Welcome back to episode seven of Take Five Friday, where we're talking the people and process behind making and maintaining the U.S. diplomatic presence around the world. This week, we're very excited to welcome Claire D'Alba, curator with Art and Embassies. Art and Embassies focuses on cross-cultural collaboration with host nation and American artists in their permanent collections at embassies and temporary exhibits at U.S. ambassadors' residences around the world. Claire has curated a number of these permanent collections, site-specific commissions, and temporary exhibitions. She's talking today with artist Courtney Madison. Courtney handcrafts intricate and large-scale ceramic sculptural works inspired by the fragile beauty of coral reefs and the human-caused threats they face. Her work has been commissioned internationally for permanent collections, including those of the U.S. Embassy in Jakarta. Her installation at the U.S. Embassy in Indonesia, titled Confluence, and the following artist exchange allowed her to reconnect with these ideas and engage with communities across the islands. We're excited to host them today. Welcome. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Claire. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Um, well, uh, we don't have much time, so let's jump in. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the project that you did for Art and Embassies and our new embassy in Jakarta? Yeah, so the work is called Confluence. It's the fifth in my series called Our Changing Seas, and it's my the largest work I've ever done yet. Um, it's huge. It's about 28 feet high, over two stories, and about 18 feet wide and up to 20 inches off the wall. Um, so it's very three-dimensional, and essentially it really celebrates the beauty and the fragility of coral reefs in Indonesia, which lie at the heart of a region called the Coral Triangle, which is often called the Amazon Rainforest of the Sea because it's so diverse and healthy and amazing. And the work really celebrates that beauty while also highlighting the human caused threats that coral reefs face due to climate change. Um, so the form is sort of like a gigantic downward hurricane spiral um, with really healthy, diverse, colorful corals at its heart um, that represent the reefs of Indonesia. And then um, there are kind of sterile white skeletons of bleached corals that are impacted by climate change that swirl around them. Can you tell us a little bit about how the piece and the ideas behind it fit into your overall practice? Yeah, so um, my work, all of my work incorporates uh, environmental message. I have a background in marine ecology and conservation and I believe art has a power to inspire people to connect emotionally and personally to environmental issues. And so I think using corals as such a stark visualization of climate change can be really powerful to connect people to that issue. Um, that connection of people is a great segue into the, our efforts as art and embassies toward cultural diplomacy. And you did an incredible cross-cultural exchange while you were there. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, it was so fun to go back to Indonesia after installing my work in the embassy. Um, I returned in 2019 and was able to travel around with the U.S. Embassy in Jakarta and staff from the consulate in Surabaya to uh, different high schools and colleges and do workshops with students uh, where everyone would create their own little ceramic coral. And it was a great way to start conversations about what corals are, a lot of people don't realize they're animals, um, and start conversations about why they're so important to Indonesia and so threatened by climate change and overfishing and other impacts. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the process of jumping back to the first question about the process of making, making your work? Yeah. So with this work in particular, I remember being really excited uh, when you and Virginia Shore, the former chief curator, um, approached me to propose this piece because I had never dealt with a wall of that size before. And um, Indonesia was such an, is such an important place for coral reefs. And so I just had so many ideas. But once I, we had a kind of final design, um, 
mapped out. I literally created a full scale map on the floor of my studio where I'm sitting here in my Los Angeles studio. And I um, built it in two parts because my studio floor isn't big enough to fit the entire thing, but um, it was really meticulous. Every piece had to fit together perfectly. And um, I sculpted everything from stoneware and porcelain. So they're all hollow forms. Um, I ended up making 404 of them for this installation. So you had the piece on the floor and then when you were in Jakarta, was that the first time that you saw it coming out at you at a yeah. at eye level, a different plane? Exactly. Yeah, it really changes once the work gets up on the wall, it kind of comes to life. So it was really exciting. Over the nine days that it took to install the work, it was really fun to see it come to life. So a lot of people who I think are listening um, to this interview today are coming to OBO from the construction side and Matt Otto and his team in Jakarta were so incredible. Um, I think that it might be interesting if you could talk a little bit about just some of the construction equipment that was used throughout the installation. Oh, it was very fun. Um, yeah, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to that art installation stuff. So we used tandem scissor lifts. We had to get up to 28 feet off the floor. So um, there were two of us kind of going up and down and um, installing the work simultaneously. And the team we had was fantastic. Everyone really worked together well. Um, and it was kind of funny because there's a catwalk in the upper section of the wall that leads to the cafeteria. So people would come and try to talk to us while we were up on the scissor lifts. <laughs> A little, a little um, distraction at times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm so glad you felt like that went well. And be even before the installation, we worked a lot with an OBO architect, Min Lee. Um, and so I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about how the piece fit it, fits into the overall architecture of that space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a site sensitive work. And I wanted to kind of incorporate, I love how light the space is. There's so much natural light in there. And so it was really fun to use kind of that white background and really make the work feel like it floated in from outside um, and is kind of swirling in space. So um, I, and I also love how you can see it through the glass from the cafeteria and from so many different levels. Um, you can walk downstairs kind of along the entire height of the work, which is really fun. Um, one view that I'm not sure we got in the introduction, introductory video is the bench that sits at the bottom of the piece. And um, being able to see it from that view looking up is seems like a yeah. really interesting vantage point. Definitely. Yeah, there's a little sitting area at the floor kind of adjacent to that plinth bench. And it's a really lovely place to hang out. I think. <laughs> um, well, I think we think so too. And we've received so much positive feedback and um, it was such a pleasure to work with you and we feel honored to have your work as part of the embassy. So thank you so much, Courtney. It's really been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you, Claire. It's really an honor for me and I really loved working with you too. So thanks. Tune in next week for our conversation with me, Christy Fouché, Director of External Affairs, and Jennifer Duncan, Director of the Foundation for Art and Preservation and Embassies. See you then.